GitHub Copilot Workspaces, welcome to the Copilot native developer environment. I'm skeptical. I have been skeptical of a lot of Copilot for a while now. And to be fair, in the past, I just thought all of Copilot would be bad. And then I used it and I actually ended up really liking it. I have an old video back from like three apartments ago where I talked a lot about it. So check that out if you're curious how my opinion has changed over time. We're not talking about standard Copilot. We're talking about Copilot Workspace today. Apparently there's an announcement video I have to watch alongside it. And why not start with that? Is there any audio that matters in here or is it just copywritten shitty dubstep? Copilot native dev environment designed for everyday tasks. Go from idea to specification with a single click. Edit the details of any step before generating a plan. Let Copilot generate code you can be confident in. Oh boy. <laughs> I have so many feelings already. I think we should read the blog post and then come back to this though, now that I've seen roughly what it looks like. In the past two years, generative AI has foundationally changed the developer landscape, largely as a tool embeddable inside the developer environment. What a sentence, just ugh, too many words. In 2022, we launched GitHub Copilot as an autocomplete pair programmer in the editor, boosting developer productivity by up to 55%. The devs who are boosted that hard aren't, okay, they needed the help, let's be real. Copilot is now the most widely adopted AI dev tool. In 2023, we released GitHub Copilot chat, unlocking the power of natural language encoding, debugging, and testing, allowing developers to converse with the code in real time. I'm gonna do a poll. Copilot, autocomplete, plus chat. This is which do you use? Just autocomplete, autocomplete, plus chat, or neither? I guess I'll put a just chat option, but I, I don't believe anybody is using just the chat. My gut feel here is that most people are using the autocomplete, but not the chat. It already looks like my suspicions here are correct, but we'll come back here momentarily. After sharing an early glimpse at GitHub Universe last year, today we are reimagining the nature of the developer experience itself with a technical preview of GitHub Copilot Workspace, the Copilot native developer environment. What's with these five line sentences? Jesus. The, also, the, the huge reach here, we are reimagining the nature of the developer experience itself. There, there are so many reach words here that are crazy. Reimagining nature itself. You're, you're, you're trying too hard here, man. <laughs> like, way too hard. AI-generated blog post, not, not the furthest thing from the truth, honestly. Within Copilot Workspace, developers can now brainstorm, plan, build, test, and run code in natural language. Natural language is a, a bold claim here. We'll see how we feel about that. This new task-centric experience leverages different Copilot-powered agents from start to finish, while giving developers full control over every step of the process. Copilot Workspace represents a radically new way of building software with natural language and is expressively designed to deliver, not replace, developer creativity faster and easier than ever before. Can they not do a sentence that's less than 20 words? Jesus Christ, like th these run-ons are killing me. With Copilot Workspaces, we will empower more experienced developers to operate as system thinkers and materially lower the barrier for anyone who can build software. I, I have feelings on this part in particular that we're going to go in depth on. Let's see the poll results quick. Just autocompletes 40%, neither is 30%, autocomplete plus chats 24%, admittedly more than I thought. Like, a good bit more than I thought, but not that much. Also, only 30% of my audience isn't using Copilot, which is nuts. That's It shows how much it itself has taken off. That said, it's kind of weird that this one simple AI helper in your code base has now become a huge brand for all of not just GitHub, but Microsoft, because Copilot's now part of Windows, which is just, do you have a better name? <sighs> Welcome to the first day of a new developer environment. What, what's with all of this reach stuff? This, this feels like a startup trying to get investment, not a, not a well-established business it's part of Microsoft trying to showcase a cool new tool. I would be much less skeptical if it wasn't for all this awful like marketing speak and the fact they use copywritten music here that might get my channel DMCA'd. So uh, I got feelings. It all starts with a task. Let's take a look at the task. Add additional validations. Check for a valid secure URL, because of the HTTPS and appropriately formatted, and it checks for a valid GitHub URL. So it begins with that. For developers, the greatest barrier to entry is almost always the beginning. Think of how often you hit a wall in the first steps of a big project, feature request, or even a bug report, simply because you don't know how to get started. Is this really that big a problem? Do I have to run another poll? Is getting started the hardest part? I'm gonna break this into a couple pieces. Yes. Less than three years experience. No, less than three years experience. Yes, 
greater than three years experience and no greater than three years experience. I, I should have reworded that is knowing how to get started the hardest part <laughs> because I just don't think so. And it looks like y'all agree. Getting started is not the hard part. It, honestly, if anything, it's seeing the task through to completion is the hardest part. Working in a brand new environment can be difficult, absolutely, but that's not a problem that ChatGPT or Copilot's going to solve for us. Like, funny enough, I, I could go on a long rant about this, but if we go to like a random repo on GitHub, most of you probably already know this, but a few of you don't, and the few who don't know this, it might change your life. If you're on any GitHub repo, you can press the period key on your keyboard, and it'll open up an in-browser VS Code instance on github.dev. GitHub has this thing called GitHub Workspaces, I believe. Code spaces, sorry. Code spaces are a secure development environment made simple. So it lets you have like a server in the cloud that lets you use VS Code in the browser or even link it to your VS Code instance like in your actual IDE. Fun fact, this product that lets you do like browser-based VS Code and have a server backing it has literally zero overlap whatsoever with the feature I just showed with GitHub.dev. GitHub Code Spaces and GitHub.dev are entirely different products on entirely different teams with no code or planning shared whatsoever, which is obnoxious because you can set up a code space that has a ton of like really high end specs so you can code quickly on any of these repos. But then the whole feature that I liked, which is the ease of going from GitHub over to your workspace just doesn't work with code spaces. It was actually hilarious when I learned this. I was in a call with GitHub as they were trying to pitch us on their enterprise stuff for ping and they couldn't justify. I was like, yeah, that's just, how it got built and yeah code spaces is super expensive do they show pricing anywhere here they charge per hour so 18 cents an hour 0.18 times 24 times 30 if you leave this on accidentally on the lowest tier that's 130 dollars a month at least 60 of the hours were free <laughs> yeah no i i am very skeptical of github's developer tools as funny as that sounds github is a place to host your code fine github is a place to get actual like work done <laughs> And now there's a third option here. We have github.dev, which is VS Code in the browser. We have GitHub Code Spaces, which is a server-backed VS Code in the browser. And now we have GitHub Copilot Workspaces, which is, again, entirely separate. <laughs> Isn't this fun? The reason I brought that all up is because if they wanted it to be easier to get started, maybe they should have one product that lets you open up a GitHub repo in a way that works in the browser. Wouldn't that be nice? But no, why would they do that when they could make a fourth product instead? This is the the, the magic of the, the GitHub treadmill, as I like to call it, where they just keep running to some new idea instead of fixing the things that they built in the past and way too much stuff's being left to rot. And since Copilot worked well, they're just redoing all of the things they've done in the past, but with Copilot sta stapled onto it now. Oof. Anyways, let's look at how it actually works. Workspaces builds the full plan. This is an interesting thing, and I've seen more and more of these AI tools starting to do this, where rather than pretend that they can just spit out correct code, they're trying to give you steps that the code will do so that you can approve or edit, because when it takes these small things and breaks it out into more parts, it's easier to do each of those steps and you're more likely to have a correct result. So it's almost like if you asked the like Copilot or ChatGPT, because we had these two points. We wanted to check for the valid secure URL and for the GitHub URL. You ask ChatGPT, what are the steps to do these two things? And it spits out 15 steps. That's what they're doing first. So they say, hey, here are the things. And then ChatGPT spits back, okay, here are the steps that we're proposing for it. So let's see what these steps are. Has the code been updated to include validations for secure URLs and GitHub URLs? No, the code has not been updated. Validations for email and phone numbers are present in source utils. No existing code in the provider files checks for secure URLs or GitHub URLs. Ooh, cool. You said the same thing twice in the issue. This is going to be fun. Are we going to enter like the don't repeat yourself era of AI? Because holy crap, like I, I know I'm going to sound crazy saying this, but this feels worse than a code review and we're not even at the code part yet. So here's the proposal. Yes, the code has been updated to include validation. No, like what? It hasn't been. Why, why is it worded that way? Ugh. Validation. Why is this the example they're using? This is so cringe. This doesn't look good. <laughs> Validations for email and phone numbers are present in this file. It, it's it, this is like the future state. It's not the steps it will do. <laughs> what? Added validation for secure URLs that check if a URL begins with HTTPS and added validation for GitHub URLs to check if the URL begins with the GitHub URL and follows the format for a valid GitHub repo or subdomain. 
and then update the readme to be more representative of the product. Include a section of the summary, include a section summarizing the key validation, include a section about the licensing linking to the license file. Why is that part of this? It's just not doing the issue. Honestly, this kind of feels like your usual like beginner trying to commit things where they just like touch 15 things they shouldn't. Like, what? What? <laughs> Why is this the example they use? This isn't good. The issue is add additional validations. Why are they updating the readme and adding and like changing the licensing? Imagine the first code base that has the license change because Copilot accidentally makes an update to it. Remember the controversy that Copilot's being trained on code on GitHub that isn't licensed such that it could be trained on it? What if Copilot starts adjusting licenses on code it wants to train on? Now we're thinking 200 IQ. Jesus, this is this is cringe. <laughs> From there, Copilot Workspaces offers a step-by-step -step plan to solve the issue based on its deep understanding of the code base, issue replies, and more. This might be the shortest sentence in the blog post so far. <laughs> it gives you everything you need to validate the plan and test the code in one streamlined list in natural language. It also gives you a bunch more, <laughs> as we've just learned, but yeah. The plan is also entirely editable. Why is it adding a contributing.md? Why is it doing that? in this. Files change three. Notice that they're not showing the readme or contributing. They, they trimmed the screenshot hoping people wouldn't notice that it made two markdown changes that it shouldn't have. Because this is all it should do. It should do the secure URL and the GitHub URL regex. And that's all it should be doing. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? I just, why is this the example they use? Because they actually not get a better example before launch? Everything that GitHub Copilot Workspaces proposes, from the plan to the code, is fully editable, allowing you to iterate until you're confident in the path ahead. Imagine if it wasn't editable. Imagine if it was all or nothing, you had to take it. Obviously, it's going to be editable. You retain all of the autonomy while Copilot Workspaces lifts your cognitive strain. I am so tired of this VC speak. This is one of the most VC speak blog posts I've ever read. I don't normally get mad about this, but it's so... <laughs> it doesn't check for subdomains. Wasn't that required? Yeah, it just doesn't check that. So not only did this do a bunch of things it shouldn't have done, it didn't do the one thing it should have done. So 50% success rate with the things it did, and then a bunch of additional failures for things it shouldn't have done. Why is this the example they're using? This is so bad. I, I feel like I'm always stuck shitting on GitHub, but they just keep releasing these half-baked things that suck, and I don't get why we pretend they're good. What are they doing here? Are they... Um... Cool, it ran tests. Did they show the tests? Because the tests are probably wrong too. No, they're actually cutting off the bad code there in this screenshot. What is this even meant to be a screenshot of? Just like running a terminal in this like fake GitHub app? And once you're satisfied with the plan, you can run your code directly in Copilot Workspace, jump into the underlying GitHub code space, and tweak all code changes until you are happy with the final result. You can also instantly share a workspace with your team via a link so they can view your work and even try out their own iterations. All that's left then is to file your pull request, run your GitHub actions, security code scanning, and ask your team members for human code review. This changes tense all throughout. This is one of, I, this is such a weird blog post. And best of all, they can leverage your Copilot workspace to see how you got from idea to code. But it's mobile compatible. I hate this. I hate this so much. Why are we here? Anyways, how many sentences start with and in this? This is so poorly written. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry to the author. I, I know you had to rush this out, but like do a copy pass. And because ideas can happen anywhere, GitHub Copilot Workspace was designed to be used from any device, empowering a real world development environment that can work on a desktop, laptop, or on the go. I'll admit I'm a pretty big GitHub mobile user. I've done probably too many reviews of code on my phone. I'm surprised the app's gotten as good as it is, but it's honestly totally usable, not for like writing code, but for quick reviews, cutting issues, stuff like that, it's nice. The idea of an AI tool for generating code on my phone isn't the worst part of this by a mile. In fact, this almost sounds nice, at the very least nicer than typing the code via a mobile keyboard, but uh, iffy overall. I eh, I wanna check this, Let's let's take a quick look. Cool, you open in a workspace, add unit tests for the secure URL valid. This is the same example that was broken. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Let's see if these uh, test cases are even correct because they said the subdomains and I don't think it had. Yeah, it doesn't have any subdomain example, so it's wrong. It's just not testing things. It's not even testing the spec. It's like cool you can do this on mobile, but it'd be cooler if the code was right. 
It's just, it's crazy that the one example they have that they're using for all of this content, it specifies it could also be a subdomain of github.com and they just didn't do that. Like what? There, there's two potential paths here. Either that was an oversight on their part, which showcases how dangerous these tools are because these types of tools need to be reviewed more strictly and even GitHub didn't review the code properly. The alternative is this is the best code they could get it to generate. Those are the only two realities we can live in here. Either this code passed their review, even though it didn't follow spec, which means this tool isn't great because it generates code that isn't being reviewed properly, or they just couldn't get a better answer out of this code. Like it's one or the other, which is it GitHub? This is a mess. <sighs> This is our mark on the future of the development environment, an intuitive co-pilot powered infrastructure that makes it easier to get started, to learn, and to ultimately to execute. By the way, you should subscribe to Theo on YouTube. Wait, okay, maybe this blog post isn't that bad after all. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. It's free, helps us out a ton. Anyways, enabling a world with 1 billion developers. Early last year, GitHub celebrated over 100 million devs on our platform and counting. As programming in natural languages lowers the barrier of entry to who can build software, we're accelerating to a near future where 1 billion people on GitHub will control a machine just as easily as they ride a bicycle. This is such VC speak. What the hell is going on? That's like one seventh of the people in the world. What? What? I just... This this feels like GitHub's trying to get acquired, but GitHub's already been acquired. Microsoft's still worth over $3 trillion, and they are currently the most valuable company in the world. Like, what? Why? Why? What? Ugh. Anyways, we've constructed GitHub Copilot workspaces in pursuit of this horizon as a conduit to help extend the economic opportunity and joy of building software to every human on the planet. At the same time, we live in a world dependent on and in short supply of professional developers. Around the world, developers add millions of lines of code every single day to ever more complex systems and are increasingly behind on maintaining the old ones. I don't think I've ever seen the word ever more used unironically since like the 1950s. The use of the word evermore here makes this feel like it was AI generated. What was the, the Paul Graham tweet? It was um, Delve. Yeah. He got shit for this, which I think is stupid because he's right. Someone sent me a cold email proposing a novel project, and then I noticed it used the word Delve. And then this. My point here is not that I dislike Delve, though I do, but that it's a sign that text was written by ChatGPT. Papers with Delve in title or abstract. That doesn't just happen. You don't go from 2,000-ish papers that use this word, not even, to 18,000 papers using this word. Like, AI just loves using these, these fancy words because of the papers and things it's trained on, and it just overuses them. Like, the most obnoxious thing ever. Paul's entirely correct that, like, when these things pop up in emails, you should be more suspicious when you see these, the, the, these fancy words <laughs> that don't need to be in there. Like, I, I'm a linguist. I'm a nerd about writing. I've been copy editing for almost as long as I've been coding. Making your language simpler is a skill in and of itself. And that's what Paul is saying here. And if you've read any of Paul's writing, which by the way, you absolutely should. He has one of the best blogs on the internet, minus the fact that it's as ugly as it is. I've been meaning to do a video on how to start Google for a while, but like everything on here is phenomenal. There are so many posts here that are like all timers that, uh, like have aged incredibly. Like how to make wealth and mind the gap are both incredible. Great Hackers is also a legendary post. The Roots of Lisp is a fascinating deep dive. A unified theory of VC suckage, which is, uh, yes, he's a VC, but he's one of the most reasonable VCs. Yeah, great, great dude. You guys get the idea. He called this out because this weird use of fancy language is indicating somebody's writing this with AI, not a human. Anyways. Just like any infrastructure in this world, we need real experts to maintain and renew the world's code. This world, again, like, is this a robot talking to us from other worlds? By quantifiably reducing boilerplate work, we will empower professional developers to increasingly operate as systems thinker, or system, systems thinkers? What is this sentence? By quantifiably reducing boilerplate work, we will empower professional developers to increasingly operate as systems thinkers. This feels like a skit from Big Bang. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> we believe the step change in productivity gains that professional developers will experience by virtue of Copilot and now Copilot workspaces will only continue to increase labor demand. What are these sentences? That's the dual potential of GitHub Copilot for the professional and the hobbyist developer alike. Channeling creativity into code just got a whole lot easier. Oof. Okay. I want to drop my hot takes now. Specifically, I want to drop my hot takes as we pretend this works. So let's pretend that the code this spit out was right 
and it didn't add all the stuff that it wasn't supposed to add here. So we give it the basic instructions, like we cut the small issue that says do these two things with a decent bit of detail with the EG, and then it responds with this list of the things it's going to do. We, maybe we delete one or two things, but overall we approve. We say, yep, this looks good. And then it goes and does it. And then we get it back, we review the code, we make some small changes, but it's probably mostly fine. And then we ship it. What changes? What are the effects of this? What does this in its best potential state replace? The, the target of this tool, and this is my, my spicy take, is that this is a really unreliable junior engineer. I have felt this process some amount with junior engineers before, where I cut an issue describing things that to me seem simple because I've been writing code for over 10 years. It's somebody who is new to development or just new to working with a team, responds with all of the things that they expect this to mean. They take the, the, the two points you made and describe it in greater form. I agree or disagree, make suggestions, etc. They go off in code. They bring it back. I suggest changes because there's things wrong about it. They go back, fix them, come back again, and then we merge. There's a difference though. When I do that with an engineer, even a really junior, even the trainee level engineer, somebody fresh out of a boot camp or like a dropout from college, they show up, they start contributing, they're making changes. When I review those changes and I give them feedback and help them improve the code that they're writing, they are improving not just that code in that instance, they're improving their ability to write code as a whole. Hiring a trainee or a junior developer or even an intern is an investment in that developer's future. It is the hope, the same way that you would invest in a company hoping the stock goes up, you're investing in this person hoping that their skill goes up so that over time they can become more and more valuable both to your business and in general. This is like a worse junior engineer that can't improve because this is the info I give this in code review isn't going to be enough for it to get better. It's going to rely on everyone giving it enough feedback so that it can over the course of a few years maybe get better at some of those things. But it's an even worse investment than investing in an individual engineer on your team because if this is going to get better, it's going to get better with or without you. It only takes one person to turn an okay engineer into a good engineer. It takes an army years, if not decades, to turn this shit AI code into something that's actually reliable enough to use regularly. So I am beyond skeptical of what I'm seeing here. I just cannot fathom a future where this works well. And even if it does, it's primarily going to hurt junior engineers, which is funny because their whole thing is that this opens up development for more people. But the only people that this like brings value to are senior enough engineers to catch all the mistakes it's making. And even in its best case, all it's going to do there is give them more reasons to not hire newer engineers. Ugh. I don't see how this can be good. And honestly, the fact that like, if you haven't seen my Devon video, I am beyond skeptical of it. Since that Devon video, a lot of other people have covered it and found even more nonsense there. The fact that Devon seems entirely useless, and now this does too, has me incredibly skeptical. One more thing they didn't include anywhere, and I am not surprised they didn't include anywhere, is they don't show how long it took for any of these steps to occur. Like, how long did it take to go from issue to spec and then to code? Because for a lot of these types of things, it's not quick. With Devon, we saw generations that took 20 plus minutes to do. And this is probably going to take similar. Until the instructions get way more accurate, until the code gets more reliable, and the response time is good enough to have a, like a back and forth, I just don't see how this can work. Dev IDK, who am I, just found the link to the repo that they actually did this on, which is fascinating, because this should give us the ability to see the timestamps and also see the crap code. So let's do just that. Holy wording. Why, why did it write so much shit for what should have been a three line of code change? This is not better. Like, again, the, the goal here is to make it so experienced developers can move faster. Reading all of this nonsense and trying to figure out what it's saying is more work than just writing the two regexes or auto completing them. In fact, quick test um, regex that matches HTTPS, GitHub URLs, and all subdomains. Look at that. Additionally, the readme file has been significantly updated to provide a comprehensive overview of the library. Reminder, this is all for adding additional validations for these two very simple things, checking for a valid URL and checking for a valid GitHub URL, specifically checking for subdomains. And they redid the readme, they added a contributing MD, and let's just look at it because I'm so curious. Contributing to the Octo Academy Utils Library. Thank you for your interest in contributing to the Octo Academy Utils Library. We value your contributions and want to, like, why did it make this? Because it's just because the code base said readme to be updated, so they felt obligated to do that. Is this AI just going to find every to do in your code base and do nonsense to it? Also, what happened here? Why does it think this is a massive diff when it isn't? They didn't change these, right? Why is it diffing that? And again, the GitHub regex is wrong. This is not good. Why are they using this as the example?
I'm so confused. Ugh. Issue made at 7.56. The request was made at 8.47. That's almost an hour for it to generate the wrong code. Meanwhile, in my own development, I've been going the opposite direction with my AI tools. We'll go to the repo for my tutorial. So you might notice something in my VS Code window here. See that? Copilot's off because I've moved to Supermaven. Quick disclosure, I'm an investor in Supermaven because I was so impressed with Supermaven, I reached out and was like, can I please give you guys money? The round was about to close, but they let me in last minute. I'm very hyped with what they've built. It's pretty surprisingly cheap, especially because it's cheaper than GitHub Copilot. And it is way, way better. I have been so much happier with this. It's not trying to reinvent how you interface with your code base. It's not trying to promise that it's the ultimate AI engineer. It's just faster, more reliable Copilot. <laughs> So like if I go to some random, we'll just do a counter, new file, counter.tsx, export function. Notice how fast that happens. And it's not always like the perfect thing, but if you give it a little bit, look, const count, send counts, use state, ta-da. And since this code base is using a bunch of Tailwind, it's very heavily trained on your local immediate code base. The, this video isn't sped up. It is actually that fast. You might be watching at 1.5 or 2x, but go back to 1x speed and take a look again. I'll just delete this and show you. Counter, I press tab, it has that. I don't want that though, so we're gonna do const. Now it does that, now it finishes itself correctly. It even handles the closing brackets properly. It's nuts. Supermaven is so stupid fast that it's changed how I work with my co-pilot autocomplete thing. This is the type of win I'm looking for right now. I love the fact that AI is being used in my editor to help me write code faster and do the more tedious parts for me. The fact that this just does it so much faster closes the feedback loop significantly. And if it's not doing exactly what I want, it just auto-completes like per character. Like C, O, N, S, T. It still has that auto-complete, but I press tab and the next result's immediately there. If I switch this to Copilot quick, let's do that. Enable Copilot, disable Supermaven temporarily. Sport function. Oh, there it goes. I'm just so used to it being faster. Export function gets snippet type. The file's called counter.tsx copilot. Export function counter. Do you see how long that took? It's it's mostly right, but it's putting this in a paragraph for some reason. It's not using tailwind. Waiting. There it goes again. But like, the, it's just so hilariously slow. And it, or as Prime put it, the result is that you kind of just sit there and wait. And it's trained you as a developer to write slower because you're waiting to see what you get from Copilot or whatever other tool you're using. This is probably my favorite part of Supermaven is it doesn't do that for me. It just gives me the results immediately. And if I switch back, Supermaven Pro, enable, save, open it back up, export, function, counter. That's it. It's just, it doesn't get in your way anymore. I've been very happy with it. So if you are interested in better AI autocomplete tools, there you go, because I don't think this is it. I still firmly believe the future of AI developer tools aren't the ones that replace developers or replace significant parts of your development workflows. They're the tools that help you be more effective in the place that you already are. Going after your IDE feels like a mistake. And we've seen that because I showed earlier, GitHub has tried and failed now to make three different IDEs. It just doesn't work. <laughs> I want tools that augment my experience in the things I'm already using, not tools that promise to replace the thing I'm using with a thing that doesn't work. And that seems to be the trend right now in AI tools, and I want to come out firmly against it. I don't think we should be trying to replace huge parts of the developer workflow. I think we should be augmenting the things that we're already doing. That's all I have to say about this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Am I way off, or do you agree that this is kind of junk and you want to see a directional change? Let me know. Until next time, peace nerds.